Welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Helbig. It's a very thrilling episode. We have Not Too Deep veteran Joy Grisafa here with us, and also Not Too Deep noob Daniel Prada. We talk about one, their iconic digital relationship and also exists in real life. Uh, we talk about secrets about Escape the Night that I didn't even know existed, and we find out the pet peeves that they have about each other. Turns out Daniel's got a lot about Joey. Enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with Joey Graceffa and Daniel Prada. <laughs> Yay, Joey, Daniel, this is so fun. Yay. Joey, you're a veteran of this podcast. Yes, I am back. Thank you for coming back. And Daniel, thank you. First time. Thank you for having me. Um, Cherries popped. <laughs> can we say that on well, radio? You can fucking okay. say whatever okay. you want. Oh, on, on radio? <laughs> on, radio. <laughs> on air? On air. We're live. We're going live. Um, Daniel, can you give me a little bit about the journey to get here because you didn't just come from your house. You didn't just come from a no. shoot. You came oh, from like, the woods. I was going to like go into detail oh. for my life. Oh, we're going to get into <laughs> that, that later. later. <laughs> make sure to stop me so I don't run. <laughs> um, I was camping this weekend in Big Sur and mm-hmm. I drove like five and a half hours straight this morning, left at 6.30 a.m. or something and changed in a gas station, looking gorgeous, did my makeup while driving at 80 miles per hour on the 405. Oh, well. That, and, you know, the things we do. I mean, one, I'm so appreciative. Thank you so much for doing that. You're but welcome. two, that's um extraordinarily impressive. Thank you. If you did this in a gas station, that feels yeah. like a drag race challenge. Right. right. It was a mini challenge, actually. Yeah. I got free gas. Oh, <laughs> well, you look fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, you guys are the busiest humans I've ever seen. So the fact that you're here is like insane to me because you've been writing books, you've been working on shows, you've been working on crystals and, and, and <laughs> candles and, and yeah. a, um, I hear a rumored potential new YouTube channel for someone. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, by the time that this uh, is out now. Yeah, this will yeah, come out. It just out came th- out actually. Yeah. A few weeks ago. That's so exciting. Okay. For, well, I know you guys have probably told the story a thousand times, so you can give me like the uh, abridged version. What's the origin story of this power couple? Oh. It's all him, honestly. I, I'm just the. <laughs> oh, wait, do you mean like how we met? Background. Yeah, like oh, how okay. you guys got together. How did this happen? I stalked him on Instagram. Well, I don't know. Like you know, like the browse feature. This was like four years ago. Okay. Um. So there was no messaging on Instagram. So I like mm. somehow stumbled across his page, followed him, realized I couldn't like reach out to him or like message him. Oh yeah, at you the could time. just look at him like a yeah, zoo animal. Or I could like <laughs> comment publicly and I was not going to do that. (laughs) So his Instagram had his Twitter handle on there. Uh So then I followed him on Twitter and since I was verified, he got the notification. And I, like a normal person, I'm like, oh, this is a bot. Like he's like (laughs) buying followers or like, you know, following people to unfollow or whatever. Did you know who he was? No, no. I didn't really know the YouTube world. I knew of a few people that I watched, you know, the viral videos back in the day during college. But I didn't know it was like a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I don't know. I'm like, at the time I was interning at NBC, I just graduated school and moved to LA. And I'm like, we should get coffee sometime and like have a business meeting. <laughs> that is not that is not at all. Okay, that's how that's I was like, like twisting that's it That's like though. code for like alright, let's have like a casual date. Like yeah. let's meet for coffee and see right. if like this sure. could be something. So you can say if it doesn't work out that it was just a business right. meeting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so what happened? Um, We didn't end up having coffee. We actually ended up both of our best friends birthdays landed on the same night. Okay. So we were both out at separate bars and I went home because, like, I was done uh-huh. at, like, 11. Okay. <laughs> he's like, no, you beauty should. sleep. Yeah. yeah. He's like, you should come out and meet Well, me I was the designated friends. driver that night, so I wasn't really drinking or anything. Okay. And I invited him out. I'm like, yeah, just come to this bar. And I kept um, saying no. I was like, no, like, I'm... I'm tired. Plus, also, like, that's like scary. I mean, right, like if you've never go? met him and then you're going to his friend's birthday yes, party. Exactly. That's a lot of layers. Oh my God, thank you. Yeah. I was truly <laughs> living back then. I was new to LA. I'm like, just come out and live your life. <laughs> they all joy's at home going, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. No, Little did my, I know he was an extreme introvert. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to was, YouTubers. Yeah. And then my roommate, Megan, was like, come on, just go. Like, I'm fine. Oh, like, encouraging it's my you. my birthday. Like, but go out, have fun. And she's like, just take a shot and go. So uh-huh. I took a shot and grabbed an Uber and met up with him 
And the rest is history. Yeah, it was so scary because I like walked into the bar alone and That's it was like one of those bars. the scariest thing yes. to me, by the way. Like you overcame a lot oh to meet God. this man. It was. <laughs> but it was one of those things where it was a bar that had two layers to it. So oh. I had like a front like party room and then a back like Like dance a doorway that area. took oh. you to the back area. So I walk into the front part of the bar. No one's there. Like oh. there's no Daniel there. I'm like, oh my God. And then you're like, have I been pranked yeah. right now? Yeah. So then I went, I was like, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. And then I walked to the bathroom and I'm like, oh, there's a second area. So then uh-huh. I see him back there in his cowboy boots. And <laughs> uh, let me tell you, my Howdy. fashion choices, I was a yeehaw boy. I was wearing pleather pants. This was just for real. Can we talk? Pleather yeah, pants. Yeah, why were you wearing that? Was it, <laughs> first of all. I mean, I looked amazing. You can't, you can't, you can't um, disagree. You can't deny. I was just trying well. things out. And they didn't work. Was it I, a theme party? No. Oh. No. It was just like leather. Like I wanted a leather pant with like a jean jacket. I, I think listen. you apologized to me later. That my, I was like, I don't Anyways, know why I look like this. I sold them at whatever trading area later on. So sure. I, yeah, I got my money back. There you go. <laughs> you upcycled. Yeah. Yeah. They lived a full life. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what was your first impressions of each other meeting in real life? Um, well, we talked, did we talk a lot before texting? We did. Cause we were all traveling at the same time. So mm. we texted for like a month. No, no, th- no. This was like, just- Oh, after we met, we didn't go on a, we didn't go on another date for a while and we were texting yeah. for like a month. So basically like the time we were dating, we were just texting okay. cause he was traveling to Spain or something. Um, we just sat on the curb. We actually didn't go in the bar. We sat on the curb, West Hollywood bar, Lou bitch. Oh, I love that place. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Um, and we talked about life and like what we want to do and like our path. Like we share a lot of connections, like with our family. And oh, craziest thing, uh, we both found out that we are from the same area, Boston. back home, like right outside Boston. Right. Oh, Shout really? Out to Boston. Yeah. Oh, uh, we met out nice. in LA. It was just yeah. so weird. weird to know, like you live like. 40 minutes well from then you have a yeah. lot of like history that can cross over that yeah. you can yeah. talk about a lot, a lot of, of like, east coast love yeah but yeah we just talked for a couple hours like what three hours that's yeah. so fun it was, yeah. it was like a lifetime movie and yeah, that's what that's, i wanted so. i'm like when are you guys writing the movie <laughs> yeah. is that in progress yeah. right yeah. now is that happening <laughs> um but now you guys are a couple that works together a lot and also you know you're in a relationship like where do you guys find that balance of working professionally and then also just like cohabitating it's been really difficult you know when you surround your entire life together and also like to have a public relationship Mm, too right right? Mm. like that's there's so many different factors that you have to think about yeah i don't know how anybody does it but somehow we've made it work and um, the, over the past year, I took like a step back from being as involved and working together just cause mm-hmm. I realized like I was kind of losing a part of myself. Mm-hmm. Like I love to push him and I love to help him and work with him, but you know, he's so busy when your career is going a hundred miles per hour. Like you can't just stop for another person and help. Yeah. He's super supportive of me and I'm grateful for that. But sometimes you have to do your own thing. You yeah. Know? yeah, you got to do what's best for the relationship, yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. I'm sure it's really easy to be able to work together because you guys are around each other all the time. But if it's not. Yes and no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we yeah. both are very like stubborn in ways. Oh. And like we both like just want kind of like our idea to be. <laughs> I'm <laughs> the Mary. <laughs> yeah. How do you guys co-create together? Is there like a safe word that you use when it's like too much and one of you needs to like take a step back i no, usually just like oh, i'm like that. fine i'm not gonna do it then yeah, yeah. oh that's the we same part yeah. i'm not gonna do yeah. it then. yeah usually we find like a, a, a something way that works yeah um, for the most part we agree on a lot of things but yeah. when we don't it's like we definitely don't agree and yeah and he's such a nerd and like that i love that about him and into sci-fi and mm-hmm. dystopian and like video games and I'm complete om- opposite. I'm like traditional, like comedy, drama, rom-com, that sort of thing. So our minds work a lot differently than, but they can mesh well together. Yeah. I can mm-hmm. see how those two things that seem opposite could right. work really well together. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Tell me about the house. Oh yeah. You guys just moved into a on. new, <laughs> a new place, right? Yeah. I've heard it's been a journey. Oh my God. The longest journey of my damn life. Yeah. What happened? It was hell. <laughs> So basically, we got into the process of moving into this home, um, uh-huh. like almost like a year and a half ago, probably close to two years. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the whole building process just took forever. And then basically, there was 
nine months of delay and I had sold my house and basically we were just living from Airbnb to Airbnb. And one Vagabonds. suitcase each. Like all of our stuff was in storage. The dogs, like we couldn't find a rental house that would take three Huskies. Well, yeah. So like they that's... had to go to boarding. One would come with us for a week, like would interchange and them. You're, I mean, the job doesn't go on hiatus no, at that no, point that either. that was so tough. Like yeah. working out of home for that long of time it was mostly frustrating because the builder was like oh it's just going to be like another couple weeks Mm -hmm. so we would never like put in place like a living situation more than two weeks because we didn't want to overpay right 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 and then obviously airbnbs people rent out certain dates so Mm -hmm. by the time we found out that it was going to be a longer stay we had to like move somewhere else that had availability and a house in la to rent on airbnb forget about it it's like 10 20 grand yeah that gives me anxiety just hearing about it uh, so then what happened? Um, I mean, we just had to keep waiting it Hotel, out. Hotel, Airbnb, rental, like that whole hamster. And imagine that for like a YouTube career too. And he was balancing yeah. the book, show, mm-hmm. chant, gaming, everything. It was literally the day before I shot season three of Escape the Night. We moved out, had to go straight to set to shoot. And we were expecting to move into the new house right after Escape the Night. Yeah. It ended up being when the last episode aired of Escape the Night, we finally moved in. So it was oh the entire God. process <laughs> of Escape the Night season three it was insane. took me to get yeah. in. Wow. But we're here. I lost the 10 pounds of uh, depression weight <laughs> that I gained during that. <laughs> but also so, when you're in such an unstable right. environment yeah. constantly, there's like no routine. There's yeah. nothing. Mm. I mean, there's already no routine in the way that you guys live your lives anyway. Yeah. But that added to it. Yeah, it Were there insane. any like horrible Airbnb stories or <gasps> any like. I'm so- Spideris. See, listen, spiders well, everywhere oh in one of these rentals. <laughs> and I hate freaking spiders no. so much. Spideris. I love an old house with history. So I'm like, oh, this is gorgeous. It was Character. totally. Re- yeah, I love yeah. that. And I can live anywhere. I can live like down on the corner. Uh-huh. I can live in a hotel. I'm fine. But he, no, if there's one spider in sight, he's out. This His was bags are not parked. just one spider. This was a spider <laughs> okay, that's den. That's true. Yeah, it was the spider den. That's what that's we, what call, we it. call it. It now. had these long trees, like eucalyptus trees on the outside, and they would like nest. So all um, the baby oh, no. hatchlings would come and creep into the house. Mm-mm. What did you? But, what do you do for that? It's not your house either. Right, so you we can't told like, a lady she got like an exterminator. She got an exterminator, but it didn't work. So, <laughs> oh, God. But thankfully, we ended up leaving. That was towards the end ish yeah. of our tr- like Ugh. mess. But how's the house now? Good. Amazing. I, have, I never leave. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> no. the best thing about having a house. She's <laughs> a hermit. Yeah. Really I'm the it's only kind of bad. Sees. It like makes me really lazy because like I just like. Don't want to see anyone. Don't want to make an effort to see. No, anyone. everyone like comes to me. Right. But that's the purpose <laughs> so of having a house. That's is true. Like, that's your safe space. Yeah. Right? And we moved really for the dogs because we have a yard now. That yeah. The dogs you have can run three up. dogs now. Three, yeah. three they, huskies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they all just like lounge outside and play all day, which is the like, that's why that's we moved. a dream. Yeah. That's truly a dream. Yeah. What was the husky fascination? Was this the. Uh... I love wolves so much. Right. Okay. And I think they're the closest dogs that look like wolves. Yeah. So it started with wolf. Like the mm-hmm. name came first and then I got the dog, which he actually found in downtown. Yeah. I was in downtown um, LA and this guy was just selling a little like size of a hamster. He was so sickly looking. On the corner of like the garment district. Which was like on the street yeah, selling and a I'm puppy? Like, I'm like, okay, so you're either <laughs> stolen or uh, I don't know what, what the story is here. Yeah. And he was selling for like, what, $150? Yeah, it was super cheap. I'm like, that's a purebred. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. But Wolf is not a purebred. <laughs> no, he's a big boy. He's 90 pounds of pure, <laughs> pure man. man. <laughs> um, so I'm like, I text, I, I took the cutest picture, oh my God, uh, which I'll send you. And I sent Joe, I'm like, you need this dog, or we need this dog, or something. Because mm-hmm. uh, he knew oh, that I was like thinking about getting a dog. Mm-hmm. So cute. And like the moment that we went, we went two days later. It was in the middle of the night in a sketchy area downtown. Yeah. So wait, you didn't get the dog then that, and there. No. You went later. You made plans. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, oh, let's go street see. dog seller. Yes. <laughs> Literally, street we man. go and it's so super sketchy area. Uh-huh. And then. They're in their front yard and they hand me the dog and literally he just like nuzzles in Aww. like immediately and I was like at connection it's sold. yeah, sold. yeah. Like, and then after that they just sort of like showed up on our doorstep basically just huskies come like <laughs> once a year yeah what's the game plan how yeah. many more uh, at least five no, no 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 not right now uh, uh, maybe one more but not anytime soon not the anytime legal soon? amount you can have in LA is three without yeah. having oh. a permit yeah. 
Yes, uh, I think Anna Kana told me that the legal amount of cats you can have is like five or six before oh, you and become now she like twenty eight. Yeah, before right. you become like an adoption <laughs> shelter, basically. Yeah. Um, but no, we two was the magic number. Then once we got the third, it was like all hell broke loose. Like, really, it ruined the dynamic between the two. <laughs> the two are now picking on the first one, and oh, she's no. a woman, the first woman in our home, yeah. um, well. as a gay oriented <laughs> family, because <laughs> our other two dogs are gay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. When you know, you know. So it's the um, yeah. What us. it? How how did the third one come into play? Basically, just showed up on our doorstep. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was that like a sense. rescue situation. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. She gotcha. needed a home, and we found her. So. Oh, that's very sweet. Yeah. Um, you were talking before about Escape the Night, which is I'm fascinated about the, uh, about this series. How would you explain it to someone that's never heard of it before? Um, it's. I always say that it's like Clue meets Survivor, okay. where it's a bunch of people or I guess YouTubers thrown into the situation where they have no idea what is happening at all, uh-huh. but, um, but they're interacting with actors who do know the storyline. So it's almost like you're thrown into a movie or a video game and you're just kind of acting as a character in the world um, as yourself, uh-huh. but also as this persona that you're given Um to kind of like put yourself in this make believe world. Okay. Um, you're solving clues, you're escaping rooms, you're um going up against each other. There's a, a death challenge every episode, so someone gets eliminated. Right. Um, so there's like a voting process that happens where like the two random cards will be chosen and um they have to go into this battle and whoever survives survives and whoever doesn't dies off the show. So it's it's a reality show. Yeah, yeah it's. Be- I like to call so it. It's the not RuPaul's scripted. It's not scripted. Race but it's YouTube. like you're interacting oh, okay, with scripted that elements. Was, okay, because that's my like most confusing thing. Is like, is this scripted or are no. they really doing like escape room challenges right now? No one like every YouTuber that comes into it, they're like, yeah, I figure like we're like told what happens and stuff, and they're so shocked when they find out like when someone like comes in with like a crazy like killer uh-huh. is coming to kill you. Um, so they don't, don't no, they, don't, they don't know any of the monsters. They don't know any of the monsters. They don't know react. any of the creatures. So they're just told to react in character, but like as themselves in yes. this world. Yes. Yeah. It's like okay. a heightened reality. A yeah. Heightened it's like, of uh, yeah, a um, like fictional escape room yeah. scenario. Oh, that's so interesting yeah, to but me. But it's a whole world because we shoot night shoots, which, you know, are exhausting. Yeah. We're in the middle of nowhere. Like the props and the art department is so amazing. I mean, it's shot so beautifully right. that that's why it seems like a fully scripted series. Right. I didn't want it to look like a reality show. I wanted like it Fear to Factor. look... Like Fear Factor, yeah, yeah. Right, I wanted world. it to feel like Don't there was world. depth of field in the yeah. cinematography and... Do they get to choose their characters or are they kind um, of written out for them beforehand? Sort of. Or like I, they work with a writer to figure it out? We kind of look at the well, person. It's, honestly, the archetypes are really just about the outfit mm. and just kind of Which like... Which the styling on the show is unbelievable. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. so many awards every year. It's great. It, yeah. I mean, the aesthetic of it is fantastic. Really, really fun. Um, oh, that's so... That brings like a whole new world to it to me because I thought it was like scripted and I was like... Everyone's acting really well. I like, know. I get that question all the time. No, I get that comment all the time. It's like, oh my God, the YouTubers are such bad actors. I'm like, we're literally not acting. We're just being ourselves. But see, I thought everyone's doing a great job. I was like, <laughs> I'm really impressed because I was a little nervous that maybe this would be a little cringy right. to watch these YouTubers. Right. And I was like, oh no, they're being like very natural with yeah. all of this. Um, what was the hardest thing about making that series? Um, The hardest part... I think it's honestly just the exhaustion. Yeah. Because it's so much. We shoot two episodes a night. Oh, and, two a night? Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. And the in-between the two episodes is just like our, our downtime. And that's like 2 a.m. And that's Ugh. when everyone's just exhausted. Yeah. So getting back into it for the second episode. Like re It's hard, but like uh, the yeah. adrenaline kicks in when like someone's chasing you and like there's clues to be solved. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense too. Okay. This... Now my world is like um, all the w- doors are crashing down because I'm like, oh, when like the clowns are taking them away, they're being right. pretty gentle. And then I realize now it's, oh, because it's real. It's not yeah, being yeah. acted in that mm-hmm. way. Oh, okay. That's so fun. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, I have a billion more questions for you guys, if you yes. don't mind. Uh, we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Not 
Too Deep. Support for today's episode of Not Too Deep comes from Everlane. Never overpay for quality clothes with Everlane. They make premium essentials using the finest materials without traditional markups. And they tell you their real cost because they want you to know what you're paying for and why. In fact, they are radically transparent about everything from their materials to the ethical factories they work with and... Since Everlane sells directly to you, their prices are 30 to 50% lower than traditional retailers. Everlane's clothes look better, cost less, and last longer. They have essentials like Cotton Crew t-shirts. Um, they have a human box cut tee. You know I love a good box cut. They have cashmere crews. They have silk short sleeve square shirts. They, I mean, they have basically anything. High-rise skinny jeans, mid-rise jeans, boyfriend jeans, heels, everything you could possibly need. They have and it's supreme quality, no frills, just quality. And right now, you can check out the personalized collections that Jack and I have put together of items that they have actually sent to us right on their website. Go to everlane.com slash grace, and you'll get free shipping on your first order. That's everlane.com slash grace, everlane.com slash grace. Uh, we're back. Yeah? Yes, we are back. We're back. Yay. Hooray. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. You, Joey, how long have you been on YouTube now? 11 years. 11 years. And Daniel, how long would you consider yourself in the social media world? Uh, in the direct world of Joseph, um, I'd say four years, okay. four and a half. Maybe a little less because you were... Oh, secret. we were undercover dating for about a year. But you've been but like understanding yeah, social yeah, yeah. media. Right. So yeah. what is your relationships now with social media? I ask this of everyone because mine right now is like I'm you know, figuring it out. Yeah, so for someone that's same. been doing it forever, like, and you still post so regularly, you still like work on all of these projects. You still do all this extraneous, like more traditional stuff. Like how do you balance, manage all of that? Um, not very well. Yeah. Hey, join the club. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I'm in the same boat as you. I'm just like, it's in like the burnout phase right now where I'm just mm -hmm. like, things are changing a lot with YouTube. Yeah. And it's kind of like, a different world that I'm not used to. So it's the adjustment of toxicity. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of negativity and there's a lot of, um, braggery. Yeah. And a lot of just like excessiveness, mm. like celebrated in a way yeah. that it seems like the, like pure kind of you being you mm -hmm. doesn't feel it's like, like enough. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. It's exhausting, which is yeah. an awful message I think to give to kids who are, you know, thrown this image of what a perfect teenager looks like, like yeah. regardless of what you do or what you earn or what you're enhancing to your body. Like I could not imagine growing up in a time like 2018. Mm -mm. I, I oh yeah. I if I imagine. had all of this when I was in high school, I would be a goddamn mess. Right. Right yeah. now. Cause I think we all grew up like seeing celebrities as something that mm -hmm. wasn't attainable. There was a line there. There was like, you need to work your ass off for X amount of years to get yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. And seeing people come up overnight, like, is insane for me to see. I mean, I feel insecure and just, like, not enough. Mm -hmm. And I have, like, somewhat success. Like, I can't imagine being a kid in high school and, like, just being a kid and, like, having to have those feelings. Like, if I'm feeling that, then they must be feeling it yeah. ten times worse. Like. It's crazy. Yeah, just seeing numbers and seeing like this like very uh, public what you could call like measurements and judgments mm. of people mm. is well, like pe Yeah, people are making that super public now. Like when I saw all of your friends like tweeting back in the day like nobody was saying like oh just hit 2.6 million tomorrow. Oh just hit 2.7 million. Yeah. Oh did you not like this video cuz it didn't hit a million views in 24 hours like Sis, calm down. Yeah. No, There's like, more to life. I'm like, I'll take um, like five views from or, like very encouraging <laughs> audience members. <laughs> That'd be really great. Um, are there any, with that said, uh, social media people or channels that you guys like obsessively follow? For either, you guys both tilted your heads like your dogs. <laughs> you just oh both my God. <laughs> <laughs> No, I find myself like, because I started record pre-recording for my channel and yeah. I found I found myself like I was trying to figure out an intro, which I still haven't figured out mm -hmm. yet. But I was like talking like him and using his voice and like being overexpressive. <laughs> oh. I'm like, what am I doing? 
doing? Like, where's also, my identity? You guys have like your own language. I right. feel like you have developed this like <laughs> ability oh, yes. to. And there's some term for it, but when you make a character out of things that mm. are just not alive, psychosis. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, <there's that. laughs> yeah. No, you guys, uh, and I feel like it's just natural that right. you guys just speak at these um, words that I'm like, is that a word? Yeah. They make a yeah. word up. Uh-huh. We'll just is try. This? Also, I feel like you guys had a real heavy hand in this whole wig snatching oh. thing right now. Because I feel <laughs> yes. like you guys have been saying wig for I've like been saying 10 it years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, well, I think I was like eight months old when I first said <laughs> that word. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I remember you would say like wiggy, wig, wiggy animus or something like that. There is a whole wig yes, culture in your yeah. videos. You can really add it to any word and it makes sense. <laughs> really. What's the phrase now or word now that you guys are using? What are we always doing? I don't know. Everybody's killing all the fun words. Oh. It's like well, being... We have like our own language that we use with like you and your friends and... Oh, yeah. I have a lot of weird words that I hope will become trendy. Okay. I can't really share them at this time. <laughs> Save um, it for your channel. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's fun just to be weird and... It'd be silly. It'd be yeah. goofy. Yeah. yeah. What? Um, how would you describe your channel if people don't know about it already? Right. Um, well, it's Mr. Prada mm-hmm. on YouTube, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and that's about it. M I S T E R. M I S T E R P R E D A. And what kind of are you making? Like, because you have a really, I don't know if you keep up with it, but your website is like a very cool, like lifestyle aesthetic kind Thank of thing. Thank you. I, I did that when I was in college, and mm-hmm. then. As soon as like Instagram, Twitter and everything, I still do it occasionally, but I got really bored with writing mm. because nobody reads it anymore. I get like... Oh, it's all like, visuals. Right. Yeah. You know, like I'd rather watch a video and it was really hard for me. I'm really good in person. Like I can speak to anyone. Mm-hmm. And then like when I start, when Joey introduced me to his audience like four years ago, three years ago, it was really hard for me to be myself because I just didn't know how to act. Cause like you see so many people put on like a persona right, right, for the right. camera and I'm like, okay. It takes a while to find your yeah. voice. I'm yeah. still finding it. Practice. But, but also there's like no course in learning how to interact with a stranger that comes up that knows everything about you right. and you know nothing about them. Yeah. 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 It's and like so the you're... person at dinner who's like tapping <laughs> for something and you don't know how to react. Well, um, it's just a little bit of everything right now. Oh, it's great. um, I'm, I'm passionate about, uh, all things like home, yeah. travel, there'll be some fun Oh yeah, vlogs. you decorate your guys' house like crazy. And this is yes. going to come out the day before Christmas. So oh, right. like, oh my God. have oh, you already, so m- and we're recording oh, this, yes. you know, early November. Have you, you already there decorated? There is stuff already in the bag. <laughs> Not the tree, fully, No, no, the, it is, started. yeah, the the tree goes up tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> we st- I started on the mantles. seventh, by the way. <laughs> well, because everybody frowns upon like January 1st. I have to take it down. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. give me November, December. I'm like, there's a lot of work. Martha Stewart is currently rolling in a ditch somewhere because I've taken her <laughs> holiday wig. Um, so yeah, come on by and hopefully I make you laugh. Uh, is is there pressure every year on yourself to up the decorations? Well, now we're in a new house. So oh, has, like, oh, so this is the first bunch. year. Oh, the, 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 the blueprints oh. have been in my mind <laughs> since about a year ago. <laughs> yeah. The construction of the house. Yeah, I can't wait for you guys to see what I'm cooking. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I think Thank this is going to be great. Yeah, is I'm there... Well, I don't. I want to. I don't want to spoil anything that might show up on the channel. It's okay. Um, you guys travel like crazy together, um, and you do. I mean, people must come up to you like regularly. What's the most memorable, funny fan interaction that you've had? If there's been one, oh. or embarrassing. Well, it's, now Joey never leaves the house. We don't have this problem as much, <laughs> which is nice. But when you were touring or doing anything <laughs> like that, um, I've had some experiences in LA where my window's down in my car and I'll uh-huh. be like singing to a song <laughs> and there was this one time that this one of the Star Tours bus which doesn't have like any enclosure so right. my windows are down I'm like singing to like Selena Gomez like being <laughs> super gay <laughs> and all of a sudden this like girl in the van next to me like notices me and I'm like oh, shit. oh no like I wasn't singing I was just like moving my mouth like, I'm just <laughs> myself. like it's totally cool um and then she starts taking pictures of me and like obviously no one else on the bus who were like older knew who I was, but they're right. like, oh my God, she's taking pictures of him. He must be like a big star or something. So then they're all like looking at me taking pictures <laughs> and I'm just like rolling up the window. I'm like, oh my God, I hate this. Like I was caught like singing and like having a moment. 
Uh, but that's also a gif I wish that I could see is you just rolling up your window slowly on someone taking a photo of you. And I don't have any of those stories, but I do have stories like every couple months, like whether I'm in an airport, mm-hmm. it happened once at the Melrose Trading Post. Like I, I, it was just the right outfit, the right day, the right look. <laughs> I'll have people come up to me and be like, you're Ashton Kutcher. I love your work. And I'm like, I was going to ask, do you guys get mistaken? Okay, for anyone? When I was younger, Wait, it happened Ashton more. Kutcher? Yeah. No, no. Cause when I'm clean shaven, uh-huh. I, I turn it out. Whoa. But I always say, yes, go, what am I going to shatter your dreams in Will front you of you? Say yes. To that? Yeah, of course. I'll take a picture. You can figure it out later. I have a horror story. Um, <laughs> Saying yes to being someone. Who? I was shooting a music video back when I had my emo hair uh-huh. on the beach. Are you Tyler Oakley? No. Can I take a picture? <laughs> they asked me if I was Anthony from Smosh when we both had the emo uh. hair. We look similar because of the hair. And so this two little boys come up to me and they're like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, I'm God. like, hi. They're like, uh, are you Anthony from Smosh? And like, because I get that all the time, uh-huh. I was with my friend at the time too. And he was like, yeah, he is. And I was like. Like, I guess I'm just going to go with it. Yeah. So they're like, can you do the, um, the shut up from Smosh, (laughs) which is their like intro. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, no, I don't like to do that in person. And they kept (laughs) coming up to me and asking me. So then I finally (laughs) did it. They're like, so what's the next shut up? Because each episode's like a different like thing that goes with it. And I just had to keep going along with it. Oh, it was like a lie I wish I never did. And now those kids still live with the fact that they're like, Anthony from Smash is kind of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. He was really rude to us. <laughs> uh, that's incredible. Okay, where's the best place that you guys have vacationed and where are you going to next? Because I feel like your Instagrams are like Pinterest dreams of vacation mm. goals. I like to go on little mini trips like two nights camping or something because he he's not yeah. an outdoor cat okay um and i am <laughs> i always come back but i like to stray away for a few <laughs> hundred miles um where do you love to go japan that's my yeah. absolute oh, favorite see, i've place. never been and i highly recommend seen amazing things what's yeah. your favorite thing that you've done there um honestly everything oh, i cool. love yeah. um Kyoto is the old capital mm-hmm. of Japan. A lot so of history. I love going there. It's just so magical. A lot of great um, food there too. Mm. Yeah. Um, but the next place we want to go to is New Zealand. Mm-hmm. <gasps> New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's on my short list too. I've never been. There's so just, much to do there. It looks insanely beautiful. Yeah, Every photo gorgeous. looks gorgeous. Yeah. And I, I, like I said before, I love a camping moment. I love a tent. I love a glamping. Oh, I was going to say, are you right. a glamper? I mean, you're... I do this everything. This weekend looked a little glampy. See, I do everything, but I, I think the it. older you get, like the less you're going to be on the ground, like yeah. doing the no you don't need foam to. pad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Your bones um, deserve better. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. When are you guys writing a Broadway show? A Broadway show? I feel like you've done everything. Never. I no. would love to. <laughs> I don't sing live. I mean, you don't have to be in it. You could be the narrator that doesn't. Oh, that's true. You know? Maybe I could turn my book into a Broadway show. He listens to I, the same five songs since I met him, like on loop. Yeah, I'm one of those oh. people that still listens to my high school music. Yeah. So, well, like, what's the what are what's in rotation? Like, don't ask. I mean, Panic at the Disco has been <laughs> killing it lately. Yeah, pa- okay, They're, Panic, I love. I've been listening to them since I was in ninth grade, so it's like uh-huh. so cool. The fact that like one of my favorite bands is still their careers around so long. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's yeah, all good, like, but it's all... Still listen to Ali and AJ. Oh! You know? <laughs> Classics. And I grew up like a musical theater nerd, so I was... I, my high school had a small pool of men, so I always got the starring role in every show. So yeah. I felt like I'm like, wow, I am I am Broadway. <laughs> so I'm like confused as to why I haven't been starring on anything like Todrick. Okay, what's your what's like your dream role? <laughs> well, okay, so there's drama in high school. I dropped out of Bye Bye Birdie. Uh-oh. So I would love to reprise my role as Conrad. So basically, oh, have some closure on that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was like spring vacation. They wanted me to stay to do audition, not audition to do rehearsals. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm going away. Like this is the first time my family can afford a vacation. I'm going. And I came back from St. Martin looking tan and gorgeous. And I found out that I kind of got fired, but then I quit. It was a whole <laughs> dilemma. That was my last show. That's- that was your last show? Yeah, I was a senior anyway, so it doesn't uh, matter. I'm but like, I feel like there's now, you know, now's the time. Yeah. You're going to start Never a YouTube know. channel, get it going. Right. Like, I might just do like a one-man show of Bye Bye Birdie that no one will watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. I would absolutely watch it. Okay, let's talk about Eden. Yeah. Okay, so the third book has been out. 
It's the final installment. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did this come about? Because I know that you're, you, like Daniel was saying, you love fantasy, you love sci-fi, you love dystopia. Mm -hmm. How did, this must have been like a dream to do then. Yeah. I mean, I loved reading like dystopian fantasy books since Mm -hmm. I was a kid. So I never thought that I would be able to even create a book, especially because I grew up in special education classes. Like I always felt like the dumb kid in class. So I never thought that I'd be able to actually like create a book, not only a book, but like a series. Yeah. Um, But I did. And I absolutely love the process. Yeah. When you're passionate about something. Yeah. Then and you link up with the right people. Because yeah. who's the co-author on it? Uh, Laura Sullivan. Yeah. How did yeah. you link up with her? Basically, I needed help on to figure out how to actually like create a story. Like yeah. in like I have like all the ideas in my head, but to actually put them in like a, a proper way in a book, mm-hmm. she was able to help me take my ideas and put them in the correct order that yeah. they're supposed to be in. No, because it's the idea of writing a fictional or like why I like novel is so intimidating mm, to yeah. me that you need someone that has the expertise and knows totally. like this is how you lay this to out. To make it feel like a professional book. Yeah. Not just and like you need that crazy. mindset to like he'll go into his office or if we're on vacation like he'll disappear for like a long time. He His mind is the way it works is amazing. Like I don't know anybody as creative in that world and yeah he brought it to life in an amazing way. It's weird how it like comes to me. I'll like be just typing on my computer and it's like I see it as a movie as I'm typing. So I'm very visual. So I'm like already planning like the movie in my head as I'm just like typing. Oh, yeah. Is that a potential? Yeah. I mean, that's been the goal since the beginning, but it's so hard because the world that I've created is so expensive because it's just a really huge world that it's going to require a huge budget that. It's, I don't know. It's, it's finding to, the right partner. Yeah. No, mm. that makes sense. Did you are, did you always know that it was going to be three? And then no, you, really? I, I started with the first one and I had more ideas that I was like, I can't fit into this one. So I knew the second book, but the third one didn't really know exactly what I was going to do, but mm-hmm. it, it came to me. It was definitely the most challenging out of the three to write. Very cool. And what's like the best feedback that you've gotten from people that are like loving this? Um, I feel like just people connecting with like the plot points that I've created and like them actually like getting what I was trying to put across and, Mm -hmm. um, them just loving the characters and like shipping the certain characters and shipping is always a good sign. That means people are fully invested in the (laughs) characters and they want to see more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Who dream cast for the movie? Who would you cast? Himself. (laughs) Honestly, myself. characters. (laughs) One of the characters, not the main character. Um, But I did write a character in there that was kind of based off me. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's like the main character's brother. So that would be me. I want an unknown to play my main character. So like an up and coming actress. Um, And then I really, I love Emma Roberts. So I'd love to just have her in. (laughs) Oh, there's a perfect character for her too. It's like this kind of the same character that she plays in American Horror Story. Oh yeah. I mean, put it out there. Thoughts are things manifest that destiny. Um, okay. Let's talk about drag race. Yeah. Do you guys have drag alter egos? I'm, we don't, I'm here in drag now. (laughs) I'm we're a drag king, right? We love to dress up. I mean, for Halloween, we were both oh, women. I, yeah, yeah, I saw the... Yeah, okay. I did want to ask about Halloween because I saw the photos. You guys looked amazing. Oh, yes. What's the process in planning Halloween costumes? This is not a last-minute throw-together costume. Oh, it, it was. was? Right? Joey, yeah. Joey, every year, just wants to be gorgeous. Yeah. Which you naturally... Were a mermaid. Yeah, yes. I was like... I ordered a bunch of random stuff off Etsy. Uh-huh. I was like, well, whatever arrives. Like, I ordered a peach costume. I ordered, like... <laughs> stuff to be a witch and like i got like one shell crown and then it just all came together off that and his costume was so stunning i Uh, teased his hair before we went out so he looked very well you were what you were i was prada yeah that's also my alter ego Uh, miranda (laughs) priestley yeah um editor-in-chief of north of runway magazine (laughs) uh you looked Stunning. They won the costume i did i won i won a mixer a kitchen aid mixer in matte black Oh, this is from Rosanna Pantino's? Yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> oh, 
Um, <laughs> and party. only Rosanna would give that <laughs> yeah. away. Um, no, but, matte black. Ooh. No, it's stunning. I'm, I'll never use it, but it's in the kitchen <laughs> on display. It's for aesthetic only. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. And I just love that character. And it was very last minute. I just wanted to bring her to life. You saw, you could see me at Macy's. I was trying on all sorts of women's clothes because nobody makes clothes for a broad shoulder. Yeah. Svelte Wait, man so you like put myself. that together all yourself? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, he I was cut in the wig himself. The oh, wig yeah. looked incredible. It was like a long wig that he was just like zippity doo da zippity yeah. day. It took me six hours. <laughs> I was watching the movie. I watched it three times because I'm like a perfectionist getting, with getting that. Getting into character. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I don't know how to style, but I'm like spraying and clipping and trimming and I had a buzzer. And it's crazy. He's so talented in so many departments. It's honestly exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I will say. Well, I'm tired. <laughs> We're going to take another quick break. When we get back, now we have just Twitter questions questions for you guys Ooh. and these are thirsty and fun we'll yes, be right back let's troll <laughs> this episode of not too deep is brought to you by class pass it is a fitness membership that gives you access to over ten thousand studios and gyms around the world you can try any workout from boot camp to pilates to yoga and more all bookable with one easy to use app class pass takes the barriers out of working out you don't need to plan a circuit or do anything just book a class and show up they hold you accountable too so when you sign up for a class with your friends you're less likely to quit class pass is more than just working your muscles when you try new kinds of workouts you increase dopamine and boost memory formation and they drive results when you work out with a trainer you get more effective workouts which will help you get fitter or hit your goals faster they're motivating because they're always working out with the best trainers in the biz and it's a fun way to re-engage with old hobbies like swimming climbing tennis and more jack talks about class pass all the time it's super convenient and it gets you out of you know your traditional comfort zone of ways that you work out that might you might find boring and you know maybe you'll find a rock climbing class that you didn't know could be interesting to you so check it out you can get your free trial at classpass.com slash try slash grace that's classpass.com slash try slash grace um, okay, we're going to get into some Twitter questions. Before we do, I'm going to ask you guys the two questions. I ask every single guest that is on uh, the podcast. The first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Oh, I think, honestly, Donald Trump. <laughs> that's Especially, a very popular well, I answer. I guess that's not relevant right I have now. so many names, but I know I'm going to be ruined and canceled if I say any of them. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go nameless and just say anybody who... Uh, is an ass online and promotes okay. negativity or isn't um, humble. Yeah. Here we go. I think that's a great answer. Yeah. Two very <laughs> politically wonderful answers. Yes. Uh, okay. The other question I ask every single guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or close call. Oh my God. But you can only use three <laughs> words or three small phrases. So mine is college jogging front lawn. I'm and they- shaking. <laughs> I have the best story too, but I can't oh, share. It. You okay. go first. Um. Okay. So three words, or like a small phrase. You can interchange. Mm, I'll say <laughs> eight years old in the shower. <laughs> I feel like you pressed it into the drain. No, I actually. Um. No, that's what oh. I've heard. Hank Green has introduced us on a. Uh, Previous episode of Not Too Deep to what is called Waffle Stomp. Oh. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? Oh. I remember it's, this. I hardly ever remember things from episodes afterwards, but for whatever <laughs> reason, that's burned into my yeah, brain. That's an unforgettable It's one. called Waffle Stomp if you uh, have a situation in the shower. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? Pick it up? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did and I put it back in the laundry. Like a so, responsible uh, young okay. man. <laughs> High heat. Um, mine would be... Sixth grade sleepover, sleeping bag, buried in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Take that as you may. Oh, that okay. paints a very vivid mm-hmm. picture. And At 2 a.m., like with a shovel. <laughs> but that's very respectful of you. <laughs> I hope it's still there and like they find it one day. I mean, someone had to have found it. They just like, it's like a ghost story now. Who did this? Um, Okay, now we're going to get into some Twitter questions for you guys. We got a billion. Um, First comes from Ricky Dillon. um, And he wants to know, what's everyone's favorite Britney song? Of course, Ricky would ask that. Uh He got in there. Joey? Toxic. 
Oh Ooh. God. Okay. <laughs> That's what? generic. That's generic. It's the best. It's her best one. Well, I'm going to be politically accurate for all my Britney stands and say I can't pick a favorite because they're all my favorite. <laughs> but I will say uh, 2002 is an amazing year and anything from the golden era of pop, 2002 to 2007. Mm, okay, big. Yeah. Yes. But also all encompassing. Right. Good for you. I am a classic. I like Oops, I Did It Again. Yes. I just, every year I consider wearing that for Halloween. Can you? I don't think I can. They okay. started selling it at Urban Outfitters, oh, and that's when I realized, oh, right. I should back off okay. on this. See, I've been just waiting to get my Victoria's Secret body. So, well, that's the other thing, too. I like, right. I'd be nothing but self-conscious the Right, whole right, night. right. I think I'm going to do it next year, though. I say that every year, but I don't know. <laughs> Put it yeah. on the vision board. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, someone wants to know, why don't you guys like pet names? And what are your guys' pet peeves? Um, we, I don't like pet names. You don't like pet names for each other, no. but you pet name literally everything around you. Right, <laughs> right, right. That's so true. Um, I don't know. It just makes me cringe. Fair. Maybe we're not there yet. Maybe no, like, we will never old. be there. <laughs> okay. Okay, but what are your pet peeves? It doesn't have to be about each other. I think it's just in general. Oh, just Let's in general. do each other's pet peeves. Oh, okay. Let's really Go for get it. dramatic here. He well, hates you're... when I say no. Oh, it's so annoying. When you say no. Like, we'll yeah. be out shopping, like, for furniture or whatever. He's like, oh, do you like that? I'm like, no. Or like, <laughs> hi, I have a great idea for something. No. <laughs> I am a person, I know what I like, and I don't, 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 yeah. Oh, an um, alternative plan. For me, I could be here probably all day. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wait, open it's all the it, honestly, gates. it's mostly all household things. So he will open a cabinet or several and leave them all open. I think yes. there's like a ghost in the I house. I might be coming back to it. You never he know. also leaves his socks like tucked into the, well, I feel like okay, a lot of people do. On this. the couch, I get hot and I just slip my socks off and mm -hmm. you know. Like, I just forget to pick them up after. It makes me scream. And they find their way into the crevices of the couch. Yes, for years. <laughs> and that's just like a horde. Uh, but that's kind of about it. Also, he doesn't eat fun. Like, I wish I had somebody I could. Yeah, like, oh, like I an want, adventurous eater. Like, a, like, let's order pizza at 2 a.m. Large no. cheese oh. pizza and eat in bed and watch a movie. Yeah. I'm just not into it. Oh, I'm you're into not, it. You're not. I mean, that's, I'm with you. That I, yeah, scandalous eating. Right. Like, Trash like garbage shameful. monster eating. Shame. Yeah, without the shame though, like right. fully <laughs> leaning into oh, it being I'm pure trash. Shame. Like you'll <laughs> catch me in a car at like midnight in the driveway, like eating a cheese pizza. <laughs> I'll find like a oh, I'll find Ooh. candy wrappers in the couch. Oh, okay. so my socks might be there, but I'll find candy wrappers that he right. hides. You never find the pizza boxes, do ya? <laughs> <laughs> this couch is like a Pandora's box yes. for you guys. Okay, speaking of food, who is the better cook or? He is. Who me. cooks what better? He cooks me, everything. everything. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I cook breakfast. And oh, yeah. That. He does make okay. breakfast, but sometimes he forgets to make it for me because it takes oh, so much no. effort to oh make it for you'll make only no, for you. <laughs> that's not true at all. I'll be like making myself breakfast. I'm like, for like 10 days in a row, I'll ask him, do you want breakfast? Yeah. No, I'm the good. Always no. The 11th day, why don't you make me breakfast? <laughs> okay. Because I've the been... last 10 days, you said no. This is, a, this is a gag of mine since I was a kid. Like, I'll pretend like I'm not hungry at all and I'll but use you really it against want... them. Yeah. Yeah. The stubbornness of it all, right. the mind well, games of I it all. I order on Postmates yeah. a lot and I'll be like, do you want anything? He'll say no. no. But I always still order him something uh, and he'll eat it. That's true. That's sweet. You guys know what know. it's their secret language. Yeah. But now I know about breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone to know when are we getting a YouTube tell all book spilling all the tea, Daniel? Oh, never. I'd be arrested. <laughs> I'd be murdered. No, I, somebody would hire a hitman. Yeah. I know too much. Um, <laughs> any books for you? Um, I'm going to take it one step at a time. Yeah. Uh, I feel like a book for me, I know a lot of people have written a book, but maybe my life's not as interesting or I'm just mentally not ready. I need to experience sure. more because I'd like to write about like the career Journey. movement and everything. Um, but maybe in the future. Yeah. The door's always open. Right. You know? Um, okay. Well, someone wants to know what's Daniel filming. Oh, well. Surprise. A surprise. Issa. It's a channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's out. Go yeah, look at it. Out. Go check it out. Okay. Someone wants to know whose YouTube channel have you been watching a lot recently? Do you guys watch YouTube? He only yeah. watches YouTube. 
Well, not so much. You kind of toned oh, down I, recently. I do. Um, I dip in and out. Yeah. I'll go through I, like binge phases of watching right. like a ton of stuff and then realize like I've got to step away and watch something else. Right. Yeah. I like fell into a hole of drama channels of like the beauty drama channels and I'm just oh, like, oh, see, no, I haven't gotten into that. It makes no, me ill now. I can't watch them. It's um, too much. It kind of like messes with your head. Oof. Yeah. yeah no, it's I like, can see I that. I want to be more dramatic now. Yeah. You didn't blend that right, Joey. Is that what it is? It's people <laughs> calling each other out. I was like, I gotta watch uh-huh. this now. Yeah, I mean, no, it could be. They talk about-, about swatches a lot. Like, oh, you faked your swatches. You pre-swatched Whoa. that. See, that's yeah. hilarious to You're me. Right. So I would, I think, find the comedy. I in honestly that, feel but... bad for the beauty people. Yeah. Like, they get it the worst. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like standards that they have to queue up to. Like, that industry is so insane. Everyone just wants to find something to criticize them on. I mean, that's like the internet out too. Yeah, it's also tough. Like, you know, you're in the beauty industry. You're in an industry of judgment by nature mm. because you're trying to make yourself right. more beautiful to everyone to live up to whatever standards. So I right. think it's just inherent that people mm-hmm. are judging each other constantly. Yeah. And then when you realize that that sort of garners more attention, then it becomes Yeah, it's something. what Oof. works and what kind of like the drama like sparks interest and like sells products or mm-hmm. whatever. So I feel like a lot of it is maneuvered and situational like I, f- I think people start it on purpose sometimes yeah, yeah I don't trust anything no. like after watching tons of reality television programs right. like I don't trust that right, this right. is an organic yeah. fight that's happening yeah. that this isn't going to be a big reveal to a launch of something at the mm-hmm. end of the day yeah. but I, I think you guys have done a really good job of steering clear of yeah. you know being in that sort of realm mm-hmm. of you have a very positive vibe to you guys which I it it's what much. happens when you don't have any friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. There's but, some life advice. <laughs> right. But I also, I was cam- I was camping recently and mm-hmm. I wanted to know how to mukbang. So, because oh. I, I was going to stop in Santa Barbara and get tacos. So, I pull up a Trisha video, which I, I watch hers occasionally. But, yeah. I mean, which I love. Yeah. You wanted to learn how to. Yeah. Mukbang? And I'm like, oh, like, do you need like a set schedule of what you're sure. talking about or do you just eat? And she literally. Sat just in a car in a Seven Eleven parking lot, eats, yep. and just talks. Like even takes long, like forty five second breaks of no talking, no editing. Yeah. Does not edit out the awkward silence, right. the mouth yeah. smacking. It's all of so it. real. Yeah. So she's the one to be right now. <laughs> she also talks so much shit about so many people. Oh, absolutely. She's maybe like, not the one to be. But yeah, it's a little problematic for queen. my taste. Right. But um, but she does love openly eating. Okay, yes. favorite drag race season and queen. I really enjoyed this last season. I oh, yeah. Season 10 was one of my favorites. I'm shocked you weren't on the Influencers <gasps> episode. This is a is sore that- subject. <laughs> oh, Get no. ready to bleep some things No, out. I was actually on tour when it happened. Oh, when I got okay. really sick. So even if I wasn't on tour, well, I probably wouldn't have gotten sick if I wasn't on tour. But um, yeah, I was on tour. I couldn't do it. Gotcha. Yeah, and I also was very bitter about that because... I was going to live vicariously through Joey because that's my biggest dream. I've been watching since season one. Uh, Introduce you to the show. You're welcome. <gasps> Hi. Mm. Um, <laughs> I know because we were at the same final together, yeah, yeah. which uh, I've never seen it live before. And they like just emailed me if I wanted to go. And I was like, absolutely. Yes, I want to go. Mamrie had never seen a single episode of it at all. Oh, my gosh. So she came in completely blind. And it was like the Insane. Sasha Velour, like, oh. Yeah. I don't think oh, I can ever go one. again, though. No, it was so good. It was too long. That's, I was so, bu- yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was there I, for eight hours. And also all the queens sit next to you and they're just fanning themselves yeah. so hard. Yeah. And you realize like, oh yeah, because they can't have the air conditioning on, their makeup's running. Like, right. this is so nuts. Mm-hmm. And they insane. all are kind of quietly shading each other the yeah, whole time, they are. They're like, yeah. <laughs> so, like one queen will be on stage and they're all like, look, I live for those moments. Oh, like, it doesn't catch. <laughs> There's so many little <laughs> so moments good. that I'm like, oh, they missed that. She said it's bad stuff. Like, right a, like a camera. Uh, um, but my favorite queen, I think, is Alaska. Oh, yeah. She's fantastic. I fell in love. I mean, I've loved the show since season one, which I don't think you can find anywhere on the internet right now. It's just oh, kidding. Season Alyssa one? Edwards as well. Oh, Those two. Yeah, right. Alyssa Edwards. My is so favorite great. season is season four. Okay. I think it really put it on the map with like the drama and just Cause the I, characters. I didn't start watching. I don't know what season. I started watching seasons after it started right. and then like fell off and then started watching only like the last couple seasons. Um, who was in season four? It was Latrice Royale, Willem, Fifi O'Hara, oh, well, yeah. Sharon Needles. So uh, it was like originated the drama. So if you're going to start Drag Race, I'd start at four, work your way up and then go back and mm-hmm. appreciate season one, two, three, if you can find them. Mm. Um, favorite queen. And I'm uh, sure favorite queen gosh. changes all the time. It does. Yeah. I have some like 
true, like tried and true queens huh. like Bianca Del Rio. Oh. I love Latrice. She's so funny. Um, I love a lot of the newer queens too. I love Detox. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're great. Have you guys gone to DragCon? Mm -mm. No. Yeah. You what? did. Yeah, I did. I, I worked it. I was interviewing a bunch of queens last year it? or the year before. It was amazing. But if I ever do it again and I ever interview queens, I want to be in full drag because I just like want to oh, yeah. feel like I'm a part of the party. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise it feels, yeah, like it you're just like off. look yeah, right. looking at people. Yeah. Okay. It's a little serious. I want to know um how much okay. How much do oh. you earn? How much, yeah, how much money do you make? <laughs> Uh, how important do you think is the role of friendship in a romantic relationship? I think it's very important. Yeah. Um, I think for all of my relationships, like I had a, a strong friendship. Mm -hmm. I think you kind of like build romance on top of that. Um, I think with you is a little different cause I've never like really fallen in love with someone the second I met them. Mm -hmm. um, and then you learn to build the friendship afterwards, right. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, he, Joey's my best friend. Uh -huh. um, other than my other eight best friends. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing when he says best friend. Well, I'll be like, so who's your best friend? No, he, he'll be telling me a story about like, his best friend and uh -huh. every single time it's a different best friend okay so like, well you can only have one best friend so which no. one is it okay i'm gonna lay this to rest for the last time you can have more than one best friend uh, there are different parts of my life where that person like came through and they're still there but uh -huh. we don't talk as much sure i have like six best friends but okay. they're all like my squirrel friends like i don't have a lot of those in between are, people yeah, that those like, are your yeah. yeah you're like knights of the round table exactly those are your, your yeah. team your squad um, what's your favorite thing to do together? I love to travel. I love to travel with Joey. We yeah, go to Japan. What's your, like, do you guys have a, I mean, you must have like a travel routine. You yeah. must have like travel with, like you guys know how each other travel. Like, right. what Yeah, you, I always get the window seat. Oh <laughs> my God. I was <laughs> first since the day I met him. I am forever an aisle girl. And then I'll take a Xanax and pass out and then he like and then I'll put, my chair. put his body. Yeah, I recline <laughs> his chair. <laughs> <laughs> and I put a blanket on him and then wait don't wait to wake up we're here um, what a sweet system yeah. we love <laughs> traveling but also I know how he travels and sometimes I'm like listen you're not gonna like this trip so you're gonna stay home and I'm gonna go yeah. with one of my friends because yeah. we have to be in the wilderness well that's good and it works it's healthy boundaries yeah to understand that yeah we do that we I mean honestly we hang out we would love to watch movies mm -hmm. oh yeah you um, have the sweet house set up now with yeah, the villages yeah. like why would you ever leave yeah, it's great the simple things Oh. We're not too crazy. Like we don't go. I love dancing oh, and yeah? I love to turn it out, but <laughs> not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm retired, semi-retired. <laughs> yeah. You're elderly now. Yes. Um, okay. I'm so 16 actually, but <laughs> <laughs> you want to call that elderly. <laughs> uh, someone wants to know, were there any major screw ups on escape the night? Like breakdowns of characters or puzzles Ooh. not working or cameras getting in the way? Oh my God. Puzzles don't work all the time. And it's yeah, so frustrating. Now that I know that this is like an actual reality, yeah. like game scenario, how do you handle that? I mean, I know everything that's going on behind the scenes, okay. but none of the other people do. Right. So like when something doesn't go right, um, they have no idea. There was one incident in this last season where we're supposed to be breaking Rosanna and Sophia out of this jail. And me and Manny are like, we have this like crank that we have to like bust the door open with. Mm -hmm. um, and it just like wasn't working. And Manny just thought that we weren't doing it right. But I knew like it was just broken. Oh, so no. I was like kind of like peeking over to like production. I'm like, guys, come fix Help this. Us. Like, or like Tana <laughs> with the stickers. Oh, <laughs> Tana. Well, that wasn't really. I know, but it was just something funny. Um, no, Tana's she was very interesting on the show. Um, yeah, there is. I the cameras were off. Uh -huh. We're not filming anymore. It's like an in-between the scenes. And she sees a blue post-it note on the ground. And she's like, oh, my God, guys, I found a clue. <laughs> and we're like, Tana. Sister. That's just a post-it note. Like, the clues actually look, like, very, like, they look old specific. and weathered. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> she thought it was a post-it right. note. Right. <laughs> There's so. also a lot of like behind the scenes drama, a little casting drama. It's very interesting oh. to get to know somebody's team or how they really are. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It yeah. seems like you get a very firsthand look at all of Divas. that. Yeah. This mm. last season was actually the most professional, mm. professional. Um, cast. Like Very good. Just no complaints. They were all like very nice to have. Yeah. Um, Excited. Uh, to also, people I can down call at, out, but uh, I'm not going to do that today. Point, but <laughs> yeah, so let them okay. live another day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so many people are asking about marriage and children. Oh, mm -hmm. honey. I know. We've had this conversation a couple of times, and it's just 
were just not there. We're honestly, we are still children. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also that's growing the up, most mature thing to admit, though. Right. Uh, like ironically, maybe not even like the way I act. Oh no, I'm definitely a child sometimes. <laughs> but like the world that we live in with social media, and also I don't need to do the same thing that my parents did right. but, and get married at so young and have kids by the time they're 26. Like mm-hmm. that's not my American dream anymore. Mm. My dream is to like be happy with the career I'm in and the relationship I'm, I'm in. And then when I'm ready to give my life up and die, then I'll have kids. <laughs> like when I can no longer dream yeah. or I when mean, I become like a mommy <laughs> vlogger, which I can't wait for. That's yeah. a true Cinderella story right there. <laughs> God bless. Um, okay. We're reaching the end of the podcast. Uh, so what's next for you guys? What's going on? Daniel, I know that your channel will have launched by yes, now. Yes, it's that's... a big venture I'm excited for and I'm really nervous for. Oh, but that's I'm good. Like, yeah, Nerves are good. like a good thing. Yeah. It means you care about it. How about yeah. you, Joey? Um, by this time, I think my EP will be out <gasps> and possibly my music video, Kingdom. Yeah, that's everyone's so, asking about Kingdom oh, okay. is the other thing too. So yeah, that's my I didn't know if you could talk about it or not. That's going to be out. Or it's good. Out we can say that. It's good. Oh, there you yeah. go. You heard um, it here. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a sequel to Don't Wait in a way. Okay. Um, which is the last music video I've done. That so was like 2015 or something? Yeah. 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 Should you do you want to sing now for us? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the attempt though. Thank you. Um, so this will be out by then. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. It should and be. The yeah. EP, uh, what's it called? Kingdom. Kingdom yeah. is the EP. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's so exciting. Yeah. Congrats, both thank of you. you. Yay, and again, thank you. thank you for making time. Thank Before you, for you go, us. we're gonna give you um what we give every guest on the podcast, and you get a personalized fortune <gasps> a cookie. Carb. Yeah, a card. Yes. You don't have to eat it. It's more about oh, the I'll message inside. But um, you're welcome to if you'd like. Thank but you. I like that that's the first yeah. thing you see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Well, well, well. Oh, I got a, Is oh, this no, a I threat? I, got a double I think one. you got the same Is one. Is this like Escape the Night? Is this a clue? Oh, yeah, <laughs> this should be a really good way to find clues. Right? You can I use might, it. Mm-hmm. Go I for it. That. Read, read yours. I mean, they're the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I have a yeah. more soothing voice. Yeah. <laughs> You'll host a gathering and someone will spill their beer into one of your plant's vases, but you won't even notice. So honestly, like, move on already. Get over it. And yes, I'm sorry. I'll pay for the replacement. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, so our fortune cookies are extraordinarily sassy. What is this? It's a fortune for you. Oh. Yeah. Well, whoever breaks one of my plants has a death wish. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, Daniel Joey, thank you again so, so much. This thank was you for really, really wonderful. You. If you guys obviously haven't checked out everything that they're doing constantly, please do. Well, that's some it's ASMR for you. Quite, it's quite stale. <laughs> yeah, that's how we like it. Stale entertainment right here on Not Too Deep. We'll see you guys next time. Too deep, too deep, too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too deep was Grace Helbig. Not too deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer and directed by Jack Ferry. Producer and editor Melissa D. Mons. Writing by Diane Kang. Production assistance by Katrina Henning. Post production sound by Chris Henry. And an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. 